Hello everyone, FPL Raptor here and welcome back to another video on my YouTube channel. In today's video, we have my Game Week 6 transfer plans. If you are enjoying the content here on this channel or potentially if you are new to the channel and you're not yet subscribed, please do consider subscribing. Make sure to drop a like as well, but without further ado, let's jump into it. So guys, let's let's talk let's talk about game week five. I feel like the less said the better, but we are going to very very briefly go through it. This isn't going to be me sat here making excuses about why I had a bad week. I had an absolute stinker, and to be honest, it happens in FPL. And I hope me being sat here with a smile on my face shows you that even as someone whose job this is as a content creator, having a bad week and having what is probably not the best rank in the world at the moment. I can still have a smile on my face and just say that this is part of the game and you won't have a good week every week. And what you sometimes need to do is accept two or three things. Number one, you can't control the outcome in FPL. You can put out a team that you think looks really good on paper and it just doesn't do particularly well. Number two, you will have bad weeks and you will make bad decisions. And I definitely made some bad decisions this week and also throughout the season thus far too. And also just, it is supposed to be a game that we're supposed to have fun with. So try and laugh it off when it doesn't go particularly well and just bounce back next week. And every week is new. I know you have the same players, but you could have an absolutely cracking next game week. You've just got to try and look ahead and forget the previous game week. But firstly, we do need to address what went right and what went wrong. So what went right? Nothing. But we can discuss what went wrong. And it was a hell of a lot. But I will say that whilst I think quite a few things went against me, one big thing I feel quite lucky with Erling Haaland could have punished me so, so much more. So I actually decided on the deadline stream to bring in Hyung Min Son and captain him. That wasn't actually FOMO, and I genuinely still stand by that. I looked at it and thought, there might be a chance here to go against Haaland, which I don't really think there very often is, because most of the time, Haaland's the best captaincy shout. And even if he's not got a great fixture, often there's not really a viable alternative that stands out to me. Whereas this week, we spoke about the fact that Haaland isn't as great away from home, and he's also not very good away from home against decent defences. West Ham are a decent defence and it was away from home. And on top of that, I think you had a viable alternative in Madison, Salah and Son. You had some decent shouts. So I decided to go for it. Obviously, Son blanked and Haaland didn't return massively, but he missed five big chances and accumulated over 2.2 XG. So I could have been punished very heavily for that. But what I try to do is assess my decision-making based on the decision-making process and not the outcome. That's called outcome bias, if you heavily rely on the outcome to decide if you made a good decision or not. And before the game week started, when I made the decision, I am happy with the thought process behind it. So I still feel like a lot of the time I would make that decision over and over again, but it could have been punished a lot more. And for the time being, I'll probably just out of fear revert back to captain in Haaland in most weeks. Outside of that, I mean, the team was a disaster. Sterling, Rashford, Chilwell, and Bermo, Fernandes, Jackson, all blanking. Saliba did get me a clean sheet, which was very nice. But you can see I had Botman nine points of first sub. I mean, it really, really was an absolute disaster. I will just say one decision which I'm really, really happy with, and I will back because I know a lot of people look at this and say, did you take out Saka? And yes, but I actually am so, so happy with my decision-making process because it was proved true. We spoke about on numerous occasions, Saka is just not good away from home. He wasn't last season. He hasn't been so far this season. And I saw that two of their next three fixtures were away. Yes, they're playing Everton. And yes, they're playing Bournemouth. But they were two away fixtures with Spurs at home in the middle. And then after that, they have Chelsea and Manchester City. Both teams have been defending really well this season. And I looked at it and thought, they've got three out of the next five away from home. And the better fixtures are still away. Saka's not good away, therefore I'll sell him. And it just so go happens, he accumulated zero XG against Everton. Zero. And his expected assist was actually only 0 0.14. I know he picked up a six-pointer. I know he picked up an assist. But my, dis my thought process was, Saka's not going to weigh. I don't think he will do particularly well over the upcoming fixtures. And whilst there's only been one fixture, and I can't really tell that, and Son blanked, and it was probably a bad decision in the end, if you look at the result, I actually stand behind the reason I made it. And, it, and again, Saka just doesn't look like the same player away from home. And if that continues this season, it gives us a really nice opportunity to decide when we want to have Saka, and also when we want to potentially look at captain in, because you just do not want to look at that when he's playing away from home. So I am still okay with that decision, but maybe bringing in Son and captain in wasn't the greatest decision on paper. But I, again, I understand the reasonings that I went for it. And I just wanted to just stand here and say, yeah, an awful week, 26 points. My game week rank was nine or is 9.4 million out of 9.8 million teams. I mean, there are only 400,000 teams doing worse than me, which is, is pretty hilarious. But I've still got Turner on Monday. So if Turner keeps a clean sheet, it will still be a massive red arrow, but maybe a slightly smaller one. And we just need to bounce back. We need to look at what our team looks like for future weeks. Try and pretend that game week five never happened. And that's what we're going to do in today's video. So two free transfers. Let's look at where I might use them. So guys, agreeing to never discuss game week five ever again and moving very swiftly on to game week six. 
I have two free transfers and 1.3 million in the bank. And I just urge you, if you are in a position similar to me where you've had a pretty shocking game week five, don't overreact too much. And maybe just take a little bit of a step back and look at your transfers a little bit later. And continue to watch the video, of course. But yeah, maybe don't make any raised transfers yet because there will be a desire looking at how badly you've done in game week five and looking at some players like Sterling, Rashford, Fernandes that continue to disappoint and just wanting to get them out of your team, bring in players that are performing well. And there will be an urge to probably rage wildcard too. And I was even starting to look at wildcard drafts. This, I'm recording this on Sunday evening. I was thinking, could I? No, I don't need to, right? Nothing has really changed massively. I've just had a bad week. And I was not considering in a million years wildcarding in game week six until I had a bad week. And yes, some players are proving to be issues and I kind of want them out of my team. But you have to just prioritize and just try and think rationally still. And some of these players probably still don't need to make way in game week six. I will be honest, though. I do have quite a few issues in my team. And if I were to wildcard, a lot of players would be changing. I just need to really sit there and think and prioritize about which players need to make way and which players are potentially not as big as a bit an issue as I potentially am thinking just because they've had a poor game week five. But I would love to know down below in the comments. This is a week where I could probably do with some help and just seeing what some other opinions are as well. If this was your team and you have two free transfers and 1.3 in the bank, what would you be doing with it? And I am actually really hopeful that I will use my two free transfers this week because one of the reasons that I brought in Son in game week five and captain is I wanted to just be a little bit more active with FPL. And I know this is a bit of like action bias and just wanting to do something, but I was getting a little bit fed up of just rolling the transfer and having a very boring team. And to, to me, whilst I still want to get the best rank possible and I still want to give good advice to you guys, I also want to have fun with the game. So I'd actually quite like to use both my free transfers this week. I don't necessarily think I need them in game week seven. So let's say I'm happy using both my frees. What would you do with the team? Now, the midfield could be a potential issue, right? All five of those you could justify taking out for different reasons. But I think Embermo's fine. I think he continues to be fine. Data's good. He's on penalties. Brentford's fixtures are fine. Everton at home's a decent fixture. And I also think I've just brought in Son for the reasons that I know. I think he'll continue to play at the nine. Although there is now the chance that Richarlison comes back in and Son goes back out to the left. And Son does now have Arsenal and Liverpool. But I knew all of that when I brought him in. I can't now take Son out on the back of one okay performance and Richarlison doing well off the bench. So let's hope Son continues through the middle and let's hope even if he goes out to the left that he is on penalties as we thought he would be and maybe that little spell through the middle gives him the confidence to perform on the left. So I don't think Mbermo and Son are coming out. Rashford and Fernandes, I mean, they've got the same fixtures that I said. They've got the same data that I said as well. And Manchester United did, did have opportunities to score goals against Brighton, at least more goals. Rashford was actually incredibly impressive. I'm actually more impressed in the last two fixtures against Arsenal and Brighton. I've been more impressed by Rashford than I have Fernandes. But again, Fernandes' data continues to be pretty good. We know he's on pen. So I am struggling to sit here every week and justify keeping Rashford and Fernandes in your team. So there is this possibility to sell one. I wouldn't sell both. I'm actually starting to lean towards wanting to sell Fernandes because Rashford's performing quite well and he's getting the opportunity to score goals. So again, I understand the want to sell them. I will actually consider it this week. I'm not just going to keep sitting here every week and say, I'm not going to sell them because they've got good data and good fixtures. They need to start performing for me on a regular basis. And Sterling is a, is a tricky one because his data is still not great. I brought him in on the back, obviously, that, that brilliant performance against Luton in the hope that he would go on a really, really nice run. He was passing the eye test, but he's just not. And Chelsea aren't either. So Sterling, I wouldn't mind selling him against Aston Villa as well. It's not a great fixture. I've also got Jackson in there too. Haaland's obviously fine. He's not going to be solid. I'm not going to sell him a bummer, but I've got Jackson as one of the other attackers against Aston Villa as well. So looking at those six attackers outside of Haaland and Mbama, you could justify selling a lot of them. The issue that I've got with selling any of my five midfielders, is I don't actually, like, I don't know what midfielders I want. Let me know down below if there is someone that I'm not considering, but I'm not going to bring in Madison because of the two fixtures coming up. I feel like I've missed the boat on Foden, so I'm not really interested there anymore. I do really want Diaby. But is this the week to do it? Because whilst Chelsea have been disappointing, they've actually been very good defensively. Their defensive data is good. Another clean sheet as well in game week five. So I'm not necessarily sure that it's a great fixture for the RB, but I do want him very, very soon. I'm actually struggling. Uh, Salah would be okay, but it's going to require two transfers and quite a big downgrade somewhere to get me someone up to Salah. I'm just, I'm just looking at it and thinking there aren't any midfielders that I want in this specific week. So whilst I don't love my midfield and whilst I would be happy to take out at least three of them, maybe even four or five. I mean, who, who do I bring in? So I would love to know if you do think there is a mid midfielder that I'm missing because I can't currently see one. Let me know, which really does leave Jackson as the only attacker that I'm pretty happy to take out and use a transfer on. Now I sat here in game week four, game week three, four and five telling you not to sell Jackson in my opinion, because his data's good. Chelsea are creating chances and he will start to score, but he's just not. 
And there has to be a point. There will be a breaking point for every manager. Sometimes some managers it will be pretty soon. For you, it may have been game week two or game week three. And you're like, Joe, that's enough. I don't want Jackson. But for me, I'm a little bit more patient. But there is a breaking point, And the players need to start finishing the chances. And he's just not. And Chelsea also aren't just... They're just not quite clicking in their attack. They're just missing that final... You know, just that team chemistry and cohesion that you see with a team that have played together for a long time. So I think I'd be happy selling Jackson this week. I'll discuss in the next section who would that who that would be for. But Jackson could be making way. Then just finishing with the defence... Botman is absolutely fine. Nine pointer in game week five. I wish I'd have got that, but the fixtures coming up are really good. I'm not going to sell Estepinian this week. He's playing against Bournemouth at home. I'm not going to sell you Doggy. Think he's a great option. The two that could be making way, Saliba, just because the fixtures in general aren't great and he's not got much attacking threat. But I don't think he's a priority because he's very, very now and he's also got Bournemouth coming up too. And then Chilwell. Now, Chilwell, we knew could be benched at some point, but maybe weren't necessarily expecting that in game week five. Not a great fixture against Aston Villa in game week six. And if he is a rotation risk, could come off early, could start off the bench, then do I want him? Not particularly, even though his data is really good going forward. So I'm looking at it. And whilst last week it would have been Saliba I would have wanted to sell, this week I'm thinking Chilwell may be the one to make way. So to put all of that together, I actually think my midfield is the biggest issue, but I'm not necessarily sure where and how I use my transfers this week. Outside of the midfield, it's probably Chilwell and Jackson, a double change using both free transfers to remove two of my Chelsea players. Because having a Chelsea triple up at the moment seems an absolute joke. I mean, they're not performing well. They are defending okay, and Chilwell might not be the best one to sell. But if he is a rotation risk, Jackson's not finished his chances, that feels like a decent double move. I will just comment on Pickford and Turner. Obviously, I don't know yet whether Pickford starts on Monday night against, Nottingham, um, against Burnley. If he does, then maybe I'll want to keep him if he isn't starting then maybe that might make me want to use one of my free transfers there and also Pickford Pickford could still potentially pose an issue I actually think they weren't terrible against Arsenal and I feel like Everton could have kept at least two clean sheets so far this season Pickford hasn't necessarily been terrible himself but I do agree that it's not really that you, you don't really want to be back in the Everton defense I think is that at the end of the day I think that's it but there aren't many clean sheets in, in, in FPL in general. So I'm not necessarily sure that that is a priority to use my transfer on either. So at the moment, I feel like the biggest issues for game week six, where I would like to prioritize my transfers now, is Chilwell and Jackson out. So let's look at who might potentially come in for them. So guys, based on what I just said there, Chilwell and Jackson most likely to make way for game week six. Not that I necessarily think they are the two biggest issues, but I just feel like they are two spots that I don't mind using my transfers on this week because the midfielders that I might want to bring in, I either can't get to right now or I don't think have a much better fixture in game week six. DRB is the one in particular that I just really want very soon. I think he's going to be an absolutely exceptional FPL asset from game week eight onwards in particular and throughout the remainder of the FPL season, but probably not a priority this week. So Chilwell and Jackson. Chilwell's the easy one. If I sell, and even if it's Saliba, by the way, it may be that I decide to keep Chilwell after I've had some time to process it. And if I think he'll start in six, it may be Saliba I sell instead. But I am looking at doubling up with Botman. We saw against what has been the best attack in the league. Brentford have been the best attack in the league over the opening four game weeks before this fixture. They managed to keep a clean sheet. And Newcastle, especially at home, are fantastic. But with the fixtures that they've got coming up in general, I do see some clean sheets for them. So whilst I already have Botman... I am looking at adding either Fabian Cher or Kieran Trippier. I don't think there's a lot between them with respect to attacking data, just because I think if you look at expected goal involvement, Fabian Cher's is a little bit lower than Kieran Trippier's, but he has higher expected goals. Basically, what this is, is Kieran Trippier is a massive creative threat. His expected assist tends to sit above a 0.3 uh, per 90, which is actually extremely strong. We're looking at better than most midfielders, but Fabian Cher does carry some goal threat. And I like that because at the end of the day, you would rather your defender scoring than assisting. So I may well end up going for Fabian Cher. But if you were to push me now, I would probably try and pay the extra for Kieran Trippier because I'm planning to wildcard in game week 10. And if Kieran Trippier does prove a rotation risk, which we discussed throughout last week because there was a temptation to bring him in. If he does prove a rotation risk and he misses one game, obviously it's not great, but it's not the end of the world. That would just probably lead me to think that on my wildcard in 10, maybe I'll go for Fabian Scherer and Botman if I want to keep a double up on the Newcastle defence. So definitely looking at another Newcastle defender at the moment, probably leaning Kieran Trippier. With Jackson, I can only see one option at the moment that really interests me if I don't just decide to keep him. And I may well, I'm again, I'm probably still slightly emotional from game week five because I'm recording this on Sunday evening. But at the moment, I don't even think he's emotional. Like He's just not finishing his chances. So I am planning on taking him out at the moment. And it probably will be for Julian Alvarez. 
We discussed when I went for Jackson that Alvarez was a serious option. And a few people asked me actually in game week five, why are you just ignoring Alvarez? Why are you not talking about him in your videos? Why are you not considering bringing him in? And it was kind of like, and it wasn't necessarily stubbornness, but it was like, I've made my bed and I've got to lay in it. Like it, it made no sense for me to go for Jackson because I thought he was a slightly better option than Alvarez. Alvarez gets some attacking returns, then all of a sudden just go, well, I'm going to move to Alvarez because you can't just carry on chasing points. To be honest, I kind of was points chasing when I brought in Sterling. I was points chasing when I brought in Son. I wasn't bringing them in just because they scored points, but you can't just keep bringing in players that have just scored points. So I looked at it and thought, Jackson's data is still really good. And I know that annoys people when I say that, but it is. Alvarez's data has been okay, but he's been overperforming. And I was thinking, hopefully what we see is a bit of a reduction from Alvarez and Jackson starts to convert. But all we're continuing to see is that Alvarez is exceptional. Like he just is a great, great footballer. He finishes the chances he gets and he's creating chances for exceptionally good footballers too that take their chances. So Man City will just convert a high percentage of chances. The data doesn't need to be as good for Alvarez. So I'm looking at this and thinking, especially this week where Alvarez has Nottingham Forest at home, Jackson's got Villa. I mean, Alvarez has the better fixture, playing in the better team. He's the better finisher too. As long as I expect him to continue getting minutes, that feels like a massive upgrade for free. And you actually release a little bit of funds too. And I just look at that and I think, if I was to sit here and tell you that my double move this week is Chilwell and Jackson to Trippier and Alvarez, I don't think anyone bats an eyelid. I think you just go, yeah, that, that, that sounds absolutely amazing. And, and when there is a double transfer that you can make that sounds that nice on paper, it probably is a nice double move to make. So I'm not necessarily good, definitely locking that in. I mean, I've got tons of time before the game week six deadline, but at the moment... That is the current plan. I will now move on to my team for the next couple of game weeks just to show you, like, if I do make those moves, how does it set me up? If I don't make them, where might I potentially make moves instead? Because I think I, I do need to stop looking maybe, I think at the moment I may be looking kind of every two to three game weeks, whereas usually I think four to six game weeks ahead. And I do think that when you think four to six game weeks ahead, you can be a little bit passive, but I do think you can still plan long-term whilst attacking with your moves. So let's look ahead at some of the future game weeks and if this sets me up well going into a game week 10 wildcard. So guys, just to finish up, as I said, let's look at my team for the next few weeks if I make those transfers and look at just how it's shaping up. At the moment, the plan is a wild card in game week nine or in game week 10. I'm probably leaning game week 10 at the moment. I just feel like it pushes my current team to its upper limit of where it can lead me to before I wild card. It gives me a little bit of extra information as well going into game week 10. And game week 10 is the week where we have sort of the final set of fixtures wings. So I'm not gonna go through every team today, but we have discussed it in previous videos and I will discuss it throughout the week too. But the fixture swings really begin in game week eight for a few teams. A few teams have some tricky fixtures starting and a few teams fixtures start to ease up a little bit. Then there's another set in game week nine and then there's a final set of fixture swings for some different teams in game week 10. So you are doing it at the back end of the fixture swings, but remember you've got free transfers in eight and nine. And like I said, it gives you some information about the teams that fixtures are swinging in eight and nine. It gives you a little bit of time to think about it. So for example, Villa and also Liverpool's fixtures start to swing around game week eight. Yes, it means that you won't be able to load up on DRB, Watkins, maybe like a Moreno and also some Liverpool assets too. But it gives you a little bit of time to think about who are the assets that you want to bring in from those teams. So that's why at the moment I'm thinking probably around a game week 10 wildcard. So I'm definitely not looking beyond that. And I'm also realizing that I do have free transfers to you. So let's say I do get a little bit aggressive in game week six and I bring in Trippier and Alvarez. This is the team. It pushes me up to a 96% team rating, almost 70 predicted points in game week six. So I like that a lot. Seems looking nice and strong. Game week seven is one of my worst game week rating weeks. I mean, I've not seen one that low in a while. So my team's not particularly liked for game week seven, according to Fantasy Football Hub. But I actually think it looks fine on paper. Botman and Trippier got the really nice home fixture against Burnley. I've actually got Saliba against Bournemouth here and Estepinian against Aston Villa on the bench. But I could, of course, play Estepinian for the attacking threat. The midfield's pretty strong. Fernandez, Rashford, Son and Burmo Sterling all got good fixtures apart from Son who's got Liverpool, but Liverpool are not a good defence. So whilst that's not a great fixture for Spurs, maybe from a defensive perspective for someone like a Udoggy, it's actually pretty decent for Son. So I'm perfectly happy playing him that week. And then Haaland and Alvarez against Wolves. So I don't really need to make a transfer here. So I may well roll in game week seven. Now, the only thing to note is game week seven is the double game week for Luton and for Burnley. So it may be that I decide this week, I doubt it, but it may be that I want to do Alvarez to Morris if I really think he's a much better option or if there are any doubts. Let's say that Alvarez isn't starting or there are doubts that he starts. Maybe moving to a double game week, Morris might be the one. But for now, let's say that I just decide to not use a transfer. 
Going into game week eight, this is the final game week before the international break. The team's looking pretty good again. Obviously, it's not ideal that Botman and Trippier have West Ham away, and I've got the double up there. It's not the best fixture for the double up, but they are still a great defense, and you just never know with this kind of thing. Um, I do have Estepinha and Saliba on the bench against Liverpool and City, so they don't have the best fixture there, and I'm not going to play them. This is the start of the nice fixture run for Spurs. I've got you Doggy and Son against Luton. The midfield's got really nice fixtures all apart from in Burmo. But to be honest, Manchester United aren't the best defense as we've seen. So that's not necessarily the worst. I mean, Pickford's got Bournemouth at home if I've not removed Pickford by this point. So the team's actually fine here. I do have Haaland and Alvarez against Arsenal away. So this is the only thing. Obviously, that is not a nice fixture. But you would expect City to score. So maybe that's not terrible. But remember, at this stage going into game week eight, I may well have two free transfers and places to use it. I would quite like Madison because this is, like I said, if I'm going to wildcard in game week 10, I would have Udogi, Son and Madison for Luton and Fulham. So I'd quite like Madison here. I just don't think I could take out Fernandes for Brentford and Sheffield, for Sheffield United or Rashford. Sterling I could take out because he's got Arsenal at home in game week nine, but he's also got Burnley away in game week eight. And then it's basically the opposite for Mbermo. He's not got the best fixture in game week eight, but then he's got Burnley at home in nine. So I may well at this point, if I've not somehow removed him, I may have well removed him by then. <laughs> if he keeps blanking, he keeps disappointed, I might have. But if I've not at this stage, maybe it could be that I do Sterling to Madison. I would just have to find the funds to do so, especially if Madison continues to perform well. So it may be that I may need to make a double transfer. But then game week nine, the team's absolutely fine. The, one of the reasons that I kind of want to wait until game week 10 is if I've still got Rashford and I've still got Fernandes, they've got Sheffield United away in game week nine. It's also a decent fixture for Turner. I would at this stage still have double or triple Spurs too. I'd have my double Newcastle defense. So I don't necessarily need a wild card in game week nine unless my team massively changes the dynamic over the coming game weeks. So the team is well set up. I don't need a wild card now. I've got my I've got my eye on a wild card coming up soon. I've definitely got players that I need to remove. I just need to think about the priority in which I want to remove them and which players I want to bring in. Because at the moment, whilst I might think that my midfield needs replacing, if I'm just bringing in average assets or assets with tricky fixtures this week or not the best fixtures moving forward, then it just doesn't make sense to remove some of my other assets. So at the moment... Chill well to Trippier, Jackson to Alvarez. Use both the free transfers. That's the plan. But I'd love to know what you think down below in the comments. So guys, there you have it. That is my game week six transfer plans video. If you are somehow not yet subscribed, but you've watched the entirety of this video, please do consider subscribing. We are on the road to 100,000 subscribers and I have set the goal of getting there by the end of September. So please consider doing it completely free to, for you to do. Just scroll down, hit that subscribe button. It really, really does support me. Until next time, thank you very much for watching. Cheers. Bye-bye. <laughs>